Hello and Namaste. If the whole universe is a product of consciousness, why isn't everything conscious? Does each and every atom and particle not have consciousness? Isn't this the same experience you have in your dream too? There are inanimate objects and conscious beings in your dream. The whole dream world is the product of your consciousness. Why isn't everything in your dream conscious? You can extrapolate this to our universe too. But Vedanta has a very specific answer to this question. Technically speaking, the entire universe is consciousness. While consciousness is everywhere, only certain instruments can manifest it. Let us take another example to illustrate this point. You are standing in a well-illuminated room. What do you see? You see the sofa, the vase, the table and several other objects. Do you see light anywhere? No, you don't see light. You only see the objects it illuminates. When you are seeing a rock, what are you actually seeing? You are only seeing the light coming from the rock. Yet, you don't experience that light when you see the rock. More importantly, although there is light all around the rock and light coming from the rock in all directions, this light cannot serve as a source of light to illuminate other objects. You cannot hold the rock up and read a book with its light. Contrast this with a mirror. When a mirror reflects light, it becomes a source of light. Mirror has special property that makes it possible to become a source of light in the presence of another light source. This property of the mirror differentiated from a rock or a vase or a sofa or a table or other objects. Think about it for a minute. The only reason you see the rock is because of the light pervading it and emanating from it. If there was no light, you would not see the rock at all. When you see the rock, the only thing you are seeing is the light emanating from the rock. Yet, it is not resplendent like the sun or a tube light or a mirror that is reflecting light. It can never serve as a source of light. Whereas, a mirror or any reflecting surface can serve as a source of light in the presence of a light source. Similarly, consciousness pervades everything. But only living beings have the equipment capable of reflecting this consciousness. You can assume that human mind is like a mirror which is able to reflect the all-pervading consciousness. Just like a light reflected on a mirror becomes a source of light, the consciousness reflected in a mind becomes a source of consciousness. The clarity and brightness of this reflection depends on the nature of the reflecting surface. What differentiates a human from an animal is the quality of their equipment. Human mind is an evolved equipment which is highly efficient in channeling this consciousness. That's why we have something called self-awareness and free will. That's why only human beings have the capability of breaking free from this illusion. Other animals' equipment is not as evolved. That is why they do not have the capabilities that human mind possesses. Every living being is channeling the very same consciousness. The only difference is in the type of mind they have which limits the extent to which they can channel this consciousness. This consciousness channeling equipment is called Upadi in Vedanta. Each living being's Upadi will determine the clarity with which they reflect this consciousness. What about all the inanimate objects like the vases and rocks and tables and chairs? They do not have this upadi. So they appear to be devoid of consciousness, although they are born in consciousness, sustained by consciousness and pervaded by it. How do we wake up from this dream? How do we break free from this illusion? We realize something is a dream only after we wake up. Is that the case for our universe too? First of all, I want to caution that the dream example is just an analogy. It helps explain certain aspects of this reality we are living in but does not completely represent it. This question best illustrates the limitation of this analogy. When you wake up from your dream, the whole dream world disappears. Does that happen when we are liberated? Does the whole universe disappear once we get liberated? 
to understand what is liberation or moksha we need to first understand what is bondage or samsara we have identified ourselves with this equipment called body and mind let us go back to our mirror example your mind is like that mirror which is reflecting the all pervading consciousness because you can only see the consciousness coming from this mind mirror you assume that it exists only in the mirror and not anywhere else you identify yourself with the mirror you think i am this mirror if the mirror goes i am gone all the fragilities and limitations of the mirror you superimpose on yourself its limitedness its mortality all becomes your qualities this is true of every human being who each is like that mirror reflecting the all pervading consciousness because of this i feel i am this limited body tossed around in this vast and unpredictable universe i feel mortal with very little control over my life this is bondage this is samsara you are so caught up in an illusion you have forgotten who you really are liberation is the process of changing this identification i am not this mirror that is reflecting consciousness i am the all pervading consciousness that has created the whole universe breaking free from this illusion is simply realizing that you are not this limited body and mind but the limitless consciousness once you have internalized this fact you are liberated even while you're dreaming you know that this is a dream you're not afraid of anything that the dream world throws at you let's say i'm dreaming there is archana who is sleeping peacefully there is another archana in my dream this dream archana is limited she is all alone in a jungle it is dark and she cannot see clearly she is hearing a lot of scary noises she is afraid some creature is going to attack her and kill her then she spots a sage looking very calm in this dark and scary place he tells her not to be afraid this is all happening in her dream this entire scary forest with all its frightening noises is all in her head she has created this world if archana can understand and internalize this fact imagine what it would do to her the dream archana will no longer be afraid this is liberation she doesn't have to wake up even as she is dreaming she is aware that this is a dream there is in fact a dream state called lucid dream where the dreamer is aware that he is dreaming this world will appear like a lucid dream for a liberated person it would be like watching a movie she can confidently proclaim mano buddhya hankara chittani naham na cha shrotra jihve na cha grana netre na cha vyoma bhumir na tejo na vayu chidananda roopa shivoham shivoham chidananda roopa shivoham shivoham i am not this mind or the intellect or the ego i am not the five senses i am not the five elements which this body is made of i am the ever pure ever complete blissful consciousness i am shiva i am shiva liberation is not a physical journey it does not involve going to another plane or another reality it is an internal transformation a simple realization of your true nature That's it from me. Thank you for watching. I'll answer more interesting questions like these in my following posts. Keep watching. Please subscribe and press the bell icon for reminders. Share it with your friends and like-minded people. Until next time. Namaste.